Growing up, one of my favorite family traditions was going to the local Chinese buffet. Now, we didn't go often, but when we did, it always felt like a special occasion because it meant that I got to indulge on all the different foods that I rarely had the chance to. One of the dishes that I always gravitated towards was the crab rangoon. Creamy and delicious on the inside, and I could eat dozens of them. Now my family would always give me weird looks, because growing up poor meant that they loaded up on all the more expensive items, like crab legs and prime rib, to really make it worth the money. But there's just something about that combination of cream cheese and crunchy wonton that was simply too irresistible for me. Now as an adult, I still crave that nostalgic flavor, but instead of going to the buffet, I just make it at home, and it's incredibly easy and even better than what I remember. So do me a favor and make sure you like, comment, share, and save this video. All right, y'all, remember to wash your hands. The first thing we'll do is prep our filling, and I'm using about six ounces of imitation crab, and I'm just cutting them into half inch pieces. Now you could use real lump crab meat instead if you really wanted to, but honestly, it's just not worth it. The crab meat gets lost in the cream cheese mixture and increases the cost of this dish significantly. And for me, it's just not crab rangoon without imitation crab. Anyways, we'll get that all cut up and into a mixing bowl. Then we'll add in eight ounces of softened cream cheese and just let that come up to room temp before adding it to your bowl to make it easier to mix. Then I have some green onions that I'll chop up. And I'll add some of that to the bowl too. Then we'll season our filling with half a tablespoon of low sodium soy sauce. a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a pinch of salt. And then before I forget, I'll add in a tablespoon of melted butter too. I'm gonna give this a good mix, making sure to flake the imitation crab and get everything well incorporated. And if you like this recipe and you wanna learn how to make more of your favorite Asian dishes, make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications to stay up to date on all my latest posts. Then these are the wonton wrappers I'm using today, and each pack comes with 60 wrappers, but this batch will probably only make about 40 rangoons. Now to each wrapper, we'll add in about half a tablespoon of the filling into the center of the wrapper, and make sure you don't overstuff them as we don't want them to explode in the fryer. Then using a little bit of water, I'll just wet all four sides of the wrapper, and then I'll take two corners and bring them towards the center and give that just a little pinch. Then we'll rotate the wonton wrapper and bring the other two corners together to form a little pouch and then pressing firmly around the edges to seal it all up. We'll repeat this step until we use up all of our filling, and these rangoons are great to make ahead of time and they freeze really well too. Just get them onto a baking tray in a single layer and freeze before moving them into an airtight container. These should hold in your fridge for about three weeks, but you'll definitely eat them all well before then.
Now to a small pot, we'll add in a cup and a half of neutral oil, turn the heat up to medium high, and bring that temperature up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll fry our rangoons in batches, making sure to not overcrowd the pot, and these fry up in about two minutes, flipping halfway in between, or until golden brown. Now alternatively, you can make them in the air fryer as well by spraying them down with cooking spray and air frying at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for six to eight minutes. They won't quite be as crispy or airy, but they should still be delicious. We'll get our rangoon plated up, serve it with your favorite sauce like sweet chili or sweet and sour sauce, and just like that, you've made the perfect crispy crab rangoon at home. As always, the principal recipe is on my blog at feedthepudge.com. And if you've made it this far, let me know in the comment section what's a family tradition that you cherish. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy.